Alrighty, chugging right along. This one is going to be all about uh, importing an image and tracing said image. So let's talk about tracing uh, bitmaps, images. To expect the software to be able to trace a photorealistic turtle and give you a really stunning result is fairly flawed. You're probably not gonna get very far very fast. Typically speaking, trace functions, no matter what the software is, deal best with, you know, bright, bold colors, simple things, and so on and so forth. Now, the more powerful softwares will give you better results, but ultimately, you're gonna have to do some fine tuning afterwards. So, if we hop over to something more simplified, say, yay guy down here, it's about as simple as we can get, right? That will give you a nice, crispy, clean, fantastic result with probably not a whole lot of messing around. I've already downloaded that guy, that's the one I'm gonna use for the example again. You can try something like this, and you'll get a result. It's just a question of how clean is the result and how much tweaking and fudgety do you want to do after you've traced it. Everyone's favorite orange. And we're going to go up here to this little fantastic import bitmap. Open it up. And there we go. You can see we have bright, bold colors, simple colors, and nice hard lines. This is going to trace like primo clean, lovely, lovely. From there we go to the trace bitmap. And we grab the little robin -y guy. Some very... Simple options, but very powerful options. You can go color or black and white. So it doesn't matter if your image is color, you can choose to trace in black and white. You can choose to trace in color. You can mess with the number of colors, and then you can select some of the colors. If you see, it will automatically give you some options for colors, right, to select to. Some are gonna work better than others. You can play with the corner fit, which is how tight it goes to everything and how loose. You can play with the noise filter, which is just gonna give you a little bit of variation, and the bitmap fading, which is just the amount that your actual image looks like. That is 100% an aesthetic thing. It does not actually factor into your trace. For this case, because it's color and I wanna show you black and white, I'm gonna select black and white. And you can see right off the bat, minimum number of colors. I don't have a lot of options, right? You can mess with it so that it can trace or not trace more things if you just wanted the outline. That's how you can mess with it. We're gonna go somewhere in the middle, that 0 0.5, where'd it go? Give me 0.5, can I actually move this? Yeah, if you use your arrow keys on your keypad, when you have stuff selected, you can move it back and forth that way. Super nice function. So you can see what's going on. You can go down here to your preview and it will show you, obviously the preview of the vectors that it's going to trace for you. This is lovely. That looks super clean, I'm thrilled. It does do some other things that you don't necessarily want it to. So if you are able to remove parts in Photoshop or another editing software beforehand, if it's gonna bother you, do that. Otherwise, you can just delete these vectors after and it's easy peasy. Same thing goes for color. Again, if you select colors, vectors to fit to, it's gonna highlight them and show you. So, you know, there's nothing out of that green, but that green's giving you some outlines. The yellowy guy is gonna give you some other stuff and you can preview it. And again, the only kind of, not issue, but you start to see that you end up with some funkiness here. So in this case, just to keep it nice and clean, I'm actually gonna go back here I'm going to hit preview again and it's going to clean it up for me and I'm going to hit apply because I'm thrilled. It doesn't really look like much happened, but now we have vectors for the turtley. So again, if this is not as tight as you want it to be, well, there's a lot of pixelation in that image. So you're only going to get it to be so good. This is where you might have to go in and manually tweak some stuff. Uh, this is why I did the trace bitmap after the import vectors one because I went through the import vectors one with some of these tools down here. So, you know, like your... Your interactive trim, uh, your fit to curve, this one would be probably, let's find out, fairly helpful here. It grouped the vectors if you check that automatically. Again, I find it super handy because then I'm not selecting one piece and moving one piece and forgetting the rest. So we're gonna ungroup it to work with it. There we go. And then I'm gonna select just this guy. Well, truth be told, we don't need the image anymore, right? So you could just select that. See you later, alligator. It's a turtle. Same thing down here. I don't need these vectors. I'm gonna select them and delete them. And then this outline one, let's see what we get in node edit mode, N. Pretty crispy clean, if I'm being totally honest. I mean, nothing too funky. So you don't have to use the curve fit option, but if we do, what do we get? So let's go with Bezier. We'll keep the sharp ones because I do want them to stay sharp if I can. And we will hit preview. And you'll see that it did reduce it fairly substantially without losing me very much. The same thing can be said probably for circular arcs. There we go. You get a little bit of it back. Circular arcs are a little bit freaky. Let's go into those for right now. So let's say circular arcs, we're happy with this. Now, Bezier's you're familiar with, it has like the, the point and the handles and you can adjust them. Circular arcs do not have the same functionality. They do a little bit of freakiness. See how it kind of bends 
everything for you. All right, there's no Bezier handles on this. It wants to keep things nice and circular. So sometimes super handy, sometimes a pain in the rump to edit. Just be aware of circular arcs that they can be really handy, but these are for all intents and purposes, your Beziers, but they no longer allow you to smooth things. It creates, ironically enough, circular arcs. So if you're not happy with it, you can always do it again. And this time I'm gonna grab everything. I'm gonna go back to my fit to curve. And I'm gonna select Bezier this time. All of this stuff is happy. I hit preview, it cleans it up. I hit okay. And now if I go into node edit mode, you will see that we indeed have our Beziers back. Now, use the right tool for the right job. And in this case, you know, this serves the purpose and everything's happy. Again, I didn't feel the need to go into the align objects because those are fairly self-explanatory and you can play with them. You also have the align selected objects up here, which if you click on that guy, you can show the common tools on the drawing tab, which if you don't wanna see all of this in here, then you would have that checked off. I personally like just being able to quick align stuff and not have to go in here. So I went in here and I clicked the show common tools on the drawing tab. And now I have them all basically right here. So I can just, you know, if I want this to align to this and I want it to be whatever, that way I can. Right? Align objects, offsets, array copies, circular copies, all of these things we will, do we want to go over them now? Not really. They're all kind of just tinkery. So they're there to experiment with. That's mirrored selected objects. This is distorting things. So you can, again, start to see what you can get with it if you want to mess with it. I don't have any of these things drawn. So you need to draw some things to twist and mess around with them. Again, that's something that I might leave for a better editing software, but I haven't used it. So I can't speak directly to it. Just like everything else, you would, you've now created your vectors. You would select what you want to select. You would use your tool paths. You'd preview it to make sure you're happy with the depths and the cuts and the speeds and the speeds and all of that stuff. You'd save your tool path. You're then gonna open up your sending program. You're gonna send it, you're gonna carve it, and you're gonna come back to CNC and say, I can't believe how easy it is. This thing is awesome. I'm thrilled I bought it. That might be a personal endorsement and I'm totally okay with it because I will back that up 100%. That is tracing images. Again, if you bring in like a crazy lots of gradations and not like, like all that stuff, it's not going to perform the way you kind of want it to. You do have to use a fair amount of judgment or accept that it's not gonna trace as clean as you'd like and you'll have to go in there and fiddly fudge around to make it the way you want. That's it. We got a couple more of these to bang out. I am gonna go and consult my notes and I will see you guys shortly.